next guest is a former White House staffer and either Harold or Kumar, they're still sorting it out. He now adds author to his resume with the new memoir, You Can't Be Serious. Please welcome Cal Penn. <laughs> This is so nice. I know, it's nice to have yeah. them here. It really is. You, uh... <laughs> I told you I, uh, somebody put this book on my desk a couple days ago, and yeah. I looked at it for a second, I thought it was me. I was like, what? <laughs> We've gotten that before. We've both gotten this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If I was uh, more handsome and younger, this could potentially be me. <laughs> but it's not. I thought, hey, I wrote a book. But yeah, no, I did not. You, uh, you cover a lot in this book, including how that you got a job at the White House. Yes. Which is very strange, the way you went about doing this. Yes. I, I applied, you know, I took the sabbatical. I was on the TV show House. I applied after having worked on the Obama campaign for about a year and a half uh -huh. uh, by putting my resume online on this website. Uh, the campaign sent out an email saying if you worked on, on, on the campaign, you want a job in the administration, fill out a form on change.gov and upload your resume. So I did that. I didn't really tell anybody. Actually, I told my my manager, my acting manager, uh, who I describe as uh, I describe this in the book. He is he's every character from the HBO show Entourage in one person. <laughs> so he's a like, very ridiculous person, heart of gold, also a lion. So I told him, and he was like, "Okay, what's you're going to take a sabbatical and work at the White House if they call you?" I said, "Yeah, this way I know I'll be qualified if they call." Of course, nobody called. Uh, months go by, and I got invited to speak at the Lincoln Memorial as part of the inaugural concert. One of the perks of which is backstage, you can bring your, your family and your friends to meet the incoming first family. So said hi to the president, introduced him to my, my parents, my manager. Mrs. Obama comes over and she says, very casually, hope you stay involved. And I said, yeah, definitely. You know, I'm thinking she's saying this to everybody. And Dan, my manager, goes, well, you know he applied for a job, right? And she goes, uh, what do you mean? Would you, would you apply for a job? Yeah, yeah, he applied for a job and nobody even called him back. <laughs> and I'm like, yo, this is not the time <laughs> to do this at all. And then she says, uh, who did you apply with? And I said, well, I applied on, on change.gov. And as soon as those words came out of my mouth, I realized how ridiculous it was because yeah. I looked at her face, and now everybody knows this, obviously, after the fact, but Mrs. Obama has a low threshold for BS. So uh, she, um, she called the president over and said, uh, tell him what you just told me. And I was like, no, no, I'm good. You know, well, sir, I just, you know, I applied for a job on change.gov. Uh, and he looked at me, you know, with some amusement. Uh, and and that, that led to basically, you know, they said, well, let's look into it if there's actually something that you are qualified to do. It turned out that the three things I was working on on the campaign, outreach to young people, outreach to Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders, and work with the arts community, they were literally looking to fill one job in the public engagement office to deal with all those, so it worked out well. Have you ever thought about why psychologically you just applied online and yes. you didn't follow it up with a yes. phone call? A, because I'm very stupid. <laughs> no, but, I... but B, and this is actually the point of writing that chapter in the book, obviously it's, it feels a little salacious because everybody knows all the characters, but the point is, you know, if you've worked at a company, at that point, I started on the Obama campaign, they were 30 points down in the polls. The equivalent would be if you're working at a company that has that kind of exponential growth and you want to keep working for them, you are you should have the decency and, and respect to tell your boss that. Yeah. Because to them, it looks almost disrespectful that you're, you, maybe you don't want it, right? Maybe you're not doing it. But I had this chip on my shoulder like, I mean, am I, do, do they think I'm just going to apply because I'm an actor? But the, the reality is, for that administration... I'd love to see that resume, too. <laughs> Harold and Kumar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, they, line one, smoked a ton of weed with a fake President Bush. Somebody probably but, thought it was a joke when it came well, into the, them. The joke was my... not the, This was not a joke, but the, when I had to do the FBI background check and they ask you questions like... Uh, you know, have you ever smoked weed? And under what <laughs> circumstances? Like, literally two movies. Uh, but, and they, you know, they're trying to hide their smirks in the, in the FBI interview. You also talk about you are engaged to be married to a Josh, who is a man. Which yes. Which was uh, something that people who don't know you did not know. Yeah. When are you guys getting married? Do you know? So we, don't, we don't know. We, got, we actually got engaged almost three years ago. I, I read oh, this really? chapter that I really love in the book, chapter 18, about how we met over a conversation about NASCAR and beers, uh, and then got engaged three years ago, and, and because of COVID, obviously, it's sort of on pause, but we will see. 
This is, uh, uh, I, and before I show these tweets, tell oh. us what led to this. <laughs> All right, so we were flying to, uh, to LA for some book promotion stuff, and I noticed that Cardi B was on the flight. It was an early flight from New York, and I was like, yo, Cardi B, is, I have to go say hello. Uh, and then promptly fell asleep and had uh -huh. a dream that Cardi officiated our wedding on the plane itself, and then we held hands walking out of LAX, the three of us together. So that's the first tweet. You tweeted that Cardi so B was on. I tweeted on. this when I woke up. And, and I didn't tag her because I thought it might be tacky. And but then, then she saw it. She sees it. <laughs> first, why didn't you say hi? Second, I'm licensed to do that, so yeah. let me know. Yeah. Which is pretty great, right? So then you respond. You're the best, just gonna say hi, but didn't want to be disrespectful. Yeah. Your do not disturb now, light was on. Look at the time code on this. When I sent this back, Josh was actually asleep. Uh-huh. And I was in bed and I saw I saw her tweet, and I'm like, oh man, I, I mean I gotta wake him up, right? To make sure it's okay to reply. And I was like, no, executive decision. <laughs> Cardi B says that she's willing to marry you. She's wonderful. Of course I'm gonna say yes. Of on, course, on, yes, on there's no question about it. And Josh, I assume, agreed. Yeah, he well, he's very understated, so he said, oh, cool. And then Cardi B says, I'm down, I'll get my suit. So cool. So now, is she going to marry you guys? I hope so. I mean, you know, the, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd, we, we need to set a date. Yeah, you, well, yeah, that'll be one thing you See gotta do, yeah. Schedule. And so, I mean, how will your family feel about Cardi B marrying you? Yeah, I th you know, there's a, a, well, if we do an Indian wedding, Indian weddings can be like 10 days long, right? So, oh, wow. I would imagine if, if, if she's got the time in her schedule, it'll be the day that she officiates, and then nine days of aunties asking her about her lyrics. <laughs> Wait, so will she really have to stay for the whole 10 no, days? No, no, it's no. It's very, it's fluid. You know, okay. Hindu weddings can be very... Is very there a moment, though, at which the person does the, you know, do you take in this kind yeah, of stuff? Yeah, there are a couple, yeah. of, a couple of ceremonies like that. So. Yeah. Oh, there's a couple. There's a, but there's also, look, there's... Why the are you simple... making this so hard for Cardi B? <laughs> I feel like you're doing the same thing you I, did when you applied for the job in the true. Obama Fine. administration. Let me be clear. Let me be clear. We need 10 minutes of her time. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's how you book Cardi B. Tell her it's 10 minutes. And but... she can stay for two weeks. She can stay for two weeks. Yeah. She could even be five days late and still marry you that's guys. Correct. No problem, that's right. right? There's no issue with that. Oh my that's God, right. this would be incredible. Right. I mean, yeah. that's about, that would be just amazing yeah. to have her do that. Yeah, she's wonderful. <laughs> I'd be super down. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're still only half. Guillermo's popping over there, by the way. This Something thing, as bad is happening I, over I there. I'm not sure if you were still I wearing know, I those. keep hearing like noises. Yes. I, <laughs> Yeah, I think it's, it's gonna broke in a minute. Yeah, yeah, it's about to explode. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's very good to see you, Cal. This is the book, you it's too. called You Can't Be Serious. Cal Penn, his interesting life is available now. We'll be right back with music from Hardy. Thanks for watching. If you liked that video, click the subscribe button. And if you didn't like it, well, you hurt my feelings.